Hello and welcome to the following on podcast. Coming to you after the third T20 international between the West Indies and England in their five-match series in Barbados. The West Indies have won the third match by 20 runs to go 2-1 up in the series after a truly topsy-turvy game and a match that will be forever remembered with some magnificent boundary hitting. The West Indies lost the toss. England decided that they would bowl first, so the West Indies got first use of the playing surface and make use of it they did. Rothman Powell top scored with 107 from 53 balls only. Four fours and ten sixes for him. Nicholas Poran added 70 from 43 with four fours and five sixes. 224 for five at 11.2 and over. Not an easy session for the England bowlers. Reese Toffoli, one for 30. George Garton, one for 57. Tamar Mills, one for 52. Liam Livingston, one for 42. Adil Rashid, one for 25. Moen Ali's one over. Cost naught for 14. You'll have noticed the name George Garton there. England made five changes from the second game uh, for this match, freshening things up, bringing in three debutants. In, and they also had a change of captain with Moen Ali uh, leading the way. But uh, it wasn't to be because uh, England restricted to 204 for nine. Tom Banton, 73 from 39, top scoring. Three fours and six sixes. Phil Salt, one of those uh, debutants, along with Harry Brook and George Garton, also got to a 50 on his uh, debut with three fours and five sixes in a 24-ball uh, knock. But uh, it wasn't to be because England uh, come up short. Uh, 204 for nine from their uh, 20 overs. Romario Shepherd three for 59, re- recorded the best figures for the West Indies. Kyron Pollard chipping in with uh, two for 31. Sheldon Cottrell took one. Jason Holder took one. Akil Hussain took one as... Uh, the uh, West Indies managed to hold on and, as I say, go uh, 2-1 up in the uh, series. Let's uh, hear from the uh, player of the match. And unsurprisingly, after that incredible uh, knock, Rodman Powell was named uh, the player of the match and spoke with Mark Butcher. At number four. Um, last night, you know, last night I have a chat with the captain and he told me that I am playing today, you know, and I will, will be the one to split the left-handers, Puran and Bravo, so I'll slot at number four. Now, it's been a little while since you've uh, managed to play uh, in the the West Indies team in T20 cricket. Um, When you went away, when you're out of the side, what are you doing in order to try and get yourself back in again? Um, Where is the the improvements that you're trying to make in your game to force your way back into the team? Um, I think it's overall improvement. I know that I can strike the ball good, but I also have a little bit of wrist spin problem. Every time I start my innings, they come and bowl wrist spin. So I went away and for the last six, seven months, I've just been working on wrist spin and trying to open up the offside, and I think think that sure today. You certainly did. There was uh, there was no discernible weakness in your game there at all. Uh, you played all of the, the batters actually played Adil Rashid with quite a lot of respect. Was the plan there to try and see him off, not allow him to take wickets, and then go after the uh, the other bowlers? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, we know Rashid is the most threatening of all the bowlers. You know, so all we did is that if we say we can get 24, 30 off him. You know, that's good just to limit his wicket count and then we'll chance our arm against the other bowlers, the other 16 overs. Now, your ball striking was quite magnificent. You also had a, a terrific partner there in, in Nicholas Poran. Um, that partnership went beautifully and, as you mentioned, left and right hand was very important with that short boundary one side. Yeah, yeah, because there's a big side and there's a short side. And, you know, to, to limit Rashid, we don't, want, we don't want two right-handers to be at the crease. You know, we want a right hand and a left hand. And once both batters communicate and share the workload, that is what bring us success today. Now your, um, some of your hitting was extraordinary. You hit 108 metre six out there. Um, did you get everything out of the middle of the bat today or one or two of them just the uh, just the biceps getting it over the line? No, nah, it, did, it did very good today. <laughs> everything come out the middle today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're uh, one of only three West Indians to make uh, 100 in T20 international cricket. Do you know who the other two are? Yeah, yeah, I know very well. You know the universe boss, that is the legend, Chris Gill and Evan Lewis. Yep, well, your name goes on that illustrious list. Brilliantly played. Um, your player of the match this evening, ladies and gentlemen, is Rodman Powell. Do not forget the check. Rodman Powell collects his check from uh, Mark Butcher. And good knowledge, by the way, put on... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> put on the spot like that uh, to remember Evan Lewis and uh, Chris Gale. Uh, well, let's now hear from the England captain, Moen Ali, speaking with Butch. You're going to be captaining the side when you woke up this morning um, and you've witnessed one of, the, uh, one of the great T20 internationals, albeit on the wrong side of it. Yeah, I mean, um, it was obviously we were done a little bit there with, with Morgs going down and then you're playing three, forced to play three debutants and um, I thought the guys played really well I think mm. Salty, the way he played there, gave us a great chance and um, but the West Indies played really well, I think they have batters also who can come in and got so, they're so powerful and um, it's very difficult to bowl at them when they're playing like that Now, did you expect, I know I didn't, did you expect that sort of score on that so, from that sort of surface, did you think it was going to be as good a pitch as that in the end? You don't know what to expect here because it's, it was a better wicket, um, a smaller ground one side and then the wind is blowing this side on, on, the, on the bigger side. So with, with the power they have, it just takes a partnership like they had, which was a fantastic partnership and really um, almost took the game away from us. But we were, we, were all, we were there all the way until right at the end really. And um, so I'm, I'm really proud of the boys where we batted in the end. Yeah, tough, uh, tough introduction perhaps for, for some of the young fellas, but um, positives for the team. You already mentioned Phil Salt there, Tom Banton as well, who's kind of, you know, it hasn't quite caught fire in the way that perhaps people might have imagined he would since coming into the international team and um, Reese Topley again uh, bowling very well with the new ball. Yeah, we've got guys putting their hands up. I think uh, Bance in particular was was uh, outstanding today. I thought it would be great hopefully now going forward for his confidence. He is a brilliant player and we know what he can do in domestic cricket but he's coming here now and performing and um, hopefully going forward all three of them guys in particular can play a big part of going uh, in the future. OK, well you know what you've got to do. Two games left, you've got to win them both to take the series. Um, up for the challenge, I, no doubt. Yeah, of course. I mean, we've, we're still quite confident and we've got a very good side and um, going forward, I said from the start, it's going to be a brilliant series and hopefully it will be that. OK, thanks, Mo. Thank you. Mo and Ali speaking with uh, Mark Butcher there at the uh, presentation ceremony. He uh, won't be expecting to do media duties at the weekend, as we hope Owen Morgan will be uh, back after his uh, tight quad today, but Mo and Ali uh, standing in. Uh, Jared Kimber, uh, Gareth Batty and uh, Barry Wilkinson with me uh, just to, uh, to get some thoughts. Firstly, uh, Jared, I want to pick up there... Um, Rothman Powell, you said quite early on in the commentary today that he struggles against spin. Well, he just admitted it there. Uh, you picked it up. Actually, he's done an awful lot of work uh, about that, and he's paid dividends today because uh, he, he played really, really well with the bat. Yeah, it's really hard to go on the circuit in T20 cricket, and we see this a lot with the England players. They absolutely smash people in the blast when it's you know right arm medium seam and all that sort of stuff. And then they get to these franchise leagues and they have trouble with spin. And that's what happened to Robin Power. At a very young age, everyone thought he was going to go into the IPL. He, 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 he got given a lot of money. And once they got over there, they looked at him in the nets and they went, we can't put this guy in. in. And, and the only way he could bat would be probably batting him at number seven and holding him to the, you know, the real death. And teams didn't want to do that because his bowling wasn't up to it. So fair play to him. I'd say the penny has dropped a little bit late because I just thought he was such a good player even four or five years ago. But fair play to him to going off and doing that. So many players around the world probably not working on that. So to just fix that up. And what he did today was... Against Adil Rashid, he went, do you know what? I'm not going to attack him. He's too good. But when Liam Livingston bowls, I'm going to open myself up and hit over the offside. And if he gets too, too full, I'm going to hit him dead straight. He has the power. And as Bats has been talking about, he has the technique to do it. It's just working on the game and working on your weaknesses. And you have to respect someone like that. He's always been really talented. He's, as you pointed out, you know, when he talked about the, you know, the, uh, the, the other two players who made 100, he knows a lot about cricket. He's got a real thinking brain. I think he was made captain of Jamaica when he was quite young at one stage as well. Really, really good player. And I'm glad that we're finally seeing what he should be on the international stage. Barry Wilkinson, you obviously see an awful lot of cricket in the West Indies. Uh, what have you made of him in, in recent years? Has he been around and about the selection or is this something that's, that's just happened in the last few months and, and he's now got his opportunity again? Yeah, that's it. Spot on. Because he has been in and out of the cricket. I think Jared mentioned when he had the opportunity to play uh, in the IPL, it was a, a contract that was of an enormous proportions for him. But he just didn't live up to the expectation. He didn't live up to the standard. And then his cricket just faltered. He, he was inconsistent then at the regional level. Uh, his highest score in T20s prior to today was only 54. And he was uh, captain of the ODI team. Didn't live up to that expectation at all. He, he failed badly and was dropped. And I thought, well, look, surely Robin Paul is not going to get any more opportunities. And then he went to, us to the USA and, and played in the US League. I was in, in uh, North Carolina in October 
and he played in the finals of the US T20 League and he actually got the man of the match with a very similar innings. I think he got 87 from like 40 balls. And uh, at the end of it, I had to interview him and he said, you know, look, his main aim is within the next year to get back in the West Indies team. And this is now three and a half months later and he's done that. And if he can close the door on this selection this time by being more consistent, I think we're going to see much more of him because when he made his debut, he was highly, so highly touted. People said, well, Andre Russell... When he, when he disappears from the scene, Robin Powell is going to take over. But he just has not lived up to the expectation. Perhaps now he can turn the corner with some levels of consistency and actually step in the shoes of Andre Russell. Gareth Batty, it means that um, England are going to have to do it the hard way. But there's nothing to suggest that they can't do it. Yes, OK, 2-1 down, but there are still two to play. In some ways, it's a good place to be. You know what you've got to do. You've got to win two games. Um... So actually, the whole chat of well, if we, you know, if we lost one, it doesn't matter. We can do this, and so you, literally there in front of you. And for for sports people, that's actually a good thing. Find a way. You've got to get over the line. Um, there were some wonderful little uh, performances from two young players today in uh, in Banton and um, and at the end there from um, Salt. Um, that's something you've got to cling to. We saw the West Indies in the second game. They were clinging to those two young fellas at the end, Shepard uh, and Hussain, who, who gave a bit of impetus. England have to learn from that, grow that, get a couple of senior players back into the group just to give that stability that the West Indies had at key moments today. Uh, the captain ball beautifully for them um, and Cottrell. So you literally just marry that up with some experience you're in. Well, I'm delighted to say that Phil Salt is joining us on uh, TalkSport 2 on the following on podcast. Uh, Phil, first things first, congratulations on your uh, T20 international debut and congratulations on your innings. That, w- that was a heck of a display. Thanks very much. It's probably the first time I've heard congratulations uh, after we've lost, but <laughs> that's a new one. <laughs> it, it, it was a strange old game, wasn't it? it there, there was it sort of going in all directions at, at various stages. It was, yeah. Um, obviously, the two boys for them, Puran and Power, played so well. Um, and, you know, they took the game away from us, um, sort of in that middle. You know, I thought we started pretty well. Uh, but once they got going, we didn't seem to have very many answers for uh, for them. But that's cricket sometimes. Could I just ask you about the pitch? Because, obviously, this was the one today next to the surface that we played on on Saturday. And that wasn't the best. Sunday's pitch over the other side of the block played a lot better. So, so how did this one actually play? It looked like it was sort of somewhere between the two of them, actually. Yeah, it was. Um, obviously, every single wicket we've been on over here has been quite slow. Um, you know, it's only the first game that I've played. Um, but I'd say, you know, if you held length, um, it wasn't the easiest to sort of get away. Um, and, you know, if, if you execute and hit your Yorkers and you, and you bowl your pace off well, um, it can become quite tricky at times. When Poran and Powell were going for the West Indies, what was the chat amongst the, the players in terms of what you were seeing in terms of the wicket and therefore what could be chased down? Uh, uh, at what point were you starting to think, OK, hang on a minute, that they might be getting a little bit over par here? Um, I don't think that is a, a sort of thing that comes into too many of the boys' heads um, in this side. You know, we've got a very, very clear sort of way with our mentality um, and, I, and I don't think anybody looks too far ahead in that regard um, you know we were trying to stop them when they were going and you know fair play to them they played really well but I don't think at any point we were thinking oh this is too much and obviously Tom Banton got you off to an absolute flyer I mean 73 from 39 balls that was the start and the impetus that you needed to get yourself going yeah exactly um, in those games you know you, you always want someone to to finish on a big night out if you're going to win. Um, and unfortunately, you know, we couldn't do that tonight. Um, but, I, you know, it, it's, it's take a lot of lessons from these games and, and we've got two left to play. Um, and, you know, as Bats was saying a minute ago, it, it, it's very clear now. The, the, the group are very clear on what we need to do um, to get the series win. Pretty special for, for yourself, Harry Brook and George Garton, all making you, your T20 debuts on the same evening. Um, you don't often get three debutants in, in a lineup, so and you, you're all next to each other in the batting order as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, it was, it was cool to do that with George Garton. Um, since I went down to Sussex when I was 17 or so, um, he's been one of my close mates. So to get the opportunity to pull an England shirt with him and make the debuts together, you know, it was really cool. 
Uh, and just finally, uh, as Bats mentioned, it, it's a pretty straightforward situation now when you are um, one down with two to play. It, it, it's a nice, simple, clear this picture, which is, I, I guess, what any professional sportsman likes. You know, as soon as you, you sort of add variables into it, you sort of start thinking maybe more than what you should do. It's now really simple for England if they want to win this. They've got to win two games of cricket. Yeah, exactly. We, we know that we've got to turn up and play our best cricket twice. Um, and, and if we do that, which we know we're very, very capable of doing, um, you know, we'll, we'll get the series win. Phil, thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, here on TalkSport 2. Really appreciate your time and go, go well at the weekend. Cheers. Thank you very much. Well, Harmy, that was a heck of, heck of a game of cricket. And for, for a few moments there, we thought it was going to go right down to the wire. Yeah, absolutely, Macca. Uh, Macca, I've been saying Saturday, Sunday, how poor these pitches have been. Um, I'm, even though I'm a fast bowler, I want to see entertainment. I want to see sixes and fours. Oh, I can't believe I got as many as that. It was a huge amount. It was it over 30? I think it's the most sixes in a T20 international in the Caribbean. And some of them weren't sixes. They were eights. They were massive. 100 and, 106 metres, I think, one of the Rothman Powell ones. The ball was sanitised that many times. I think they're going to need some new sanitizer. Uh, it was a great advert for T20 international cricket. I know England lost, but the the performance by by everybody in the game, I think, is a credit to to what this game needs to to happen. T20 cricket should be about what we've seen tonight. Yes, bowlers might feel as though they haven't hit their lengths, they haven't hit their strides properly, but when you see batsmen of destructiveness of the way Nicholas Puran played and uh, Rothman Powell, 107 off. 53 balls, 10 sixes. Wow, it doesn't matter where you where you try and bowl. When a guy's in that sort of frame of mind, um, he, he hits you good balls for six. So, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a fantastic evening and a great one for the series. So now England have to go and win both games at the weekend. Yeah, 31 sixes in the match, if my uh, quick maths is, is correct. Gareth, when you have so many sixes, do you say... The batsmen have, have just had a day out, or do you have to say that well, maybe have the bowlers got it wrong? Which, which, which came out? Was it was it good batting tonight rather than some poor bowling? Because I mean, some of those shots were unbelievably good. Yeah, and when it's an unbelievable shot, as a bowler, sometimes you have to take that on the chin. You have to wear it. But if it's an easy step hit, if it's an easy get into position hit then I think the bowlers need to just take a little bit more responsibility themselves to say, actually, that was a little bit too easy. Short boundary one side, the wind blowing to the bigger boundary, it was always going to be a tough night. And the one thing you know that um, if it is a flatter pitch like that, there are going to be fours and sixes. It's how many and where you get hit. Now, if you're getting hit over your fielders consistently, you're getting your lines right, you might just be mis-executing, or the bloke has had one heck of a day out, which we saw today in Powell. There's an amount of execution. There's an amount of thought process. Of course there is. But I think we need to, as an England team, look at maybe just the small bits that the West Indian bowlers got right. Cottrell was magnificent up front. But I think Topley negated that. I think they sort of equalised themselves. So if we can get somebody to go with Rashid in the middle, as the West Indian captain did, Pollard, then I think we're not a million miles away. Um, On a surface like that, you know, you might eradicate three sixes. You're pretty much in the game. Um, so it's as simple as that. It's a really simple thing. It's very easy sat here to say it. It's extremely difficult when you're out there under the pressure. Harmy, I mean, just to, to look at it, I mean, obviously this side that England have had today, five changes, three debutants, and they've still given a really good account of themselves, trying to chase down 225 to win a game. And when you think, no Butler, no Stokes, no Bearstow. No, and you can actually go for sort of three or four more of the names. That's a heck of an effort from this from this pretty young group. Oh, un- absolutely, Marcus. I, uh, Marcus, I said it right at the top that I, this team excites me. We're seeing some fresh faces. We're seeing can they step up to the mark? I think there's one or two have. I think there was a bit of nerves there. I think what Bats is saying is 100% spot on. At the end there, the way the West Indian bowlers like Sir Holder and, and Cottrell bowl hard into length, uh, showing their experience, 2020 campaigners at international level. That was just the small margins in what this game game was. But uh, I'm pleased to see there was going to be four changes anyway. There was only Morgan that met at the fifth change right at the last minute. 
England were going were gonna to make four changes. I will question one of them, though, having looked at Liam Livingston in that middle period when he went for that, I think he came back for the second run. Yeah, he hadn't even fa- I don't think he even faced the ball. I don't think it was his uh, his runs that he was running back for. And you could see that he was out of breath, really struggling. And I think the question mark would be who made that decision to, to deem Liam Livingston fit, whether that had any indication on what was going to happen later on in the piece. I don't think so. Um, but, look, I think you just have to doff your cap and say, well played the West Indies. They got the execution on what they tried, which was to hit the ball out the ground better than England. And that's why they've won.